So I'd like to welcome Adina Marciano. Uh, Adina is a product, man product manager for linked open data at Ex Libris, part of Clarivate. With a background in stat statistics and big data, she focuses on integrating linked data into the library ecosystem in Ex Libris products. Welcome. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. All right, uh, you can see my screen up here, right? Okay, great. So, hi everyone. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, because I'm going to reach their own time zone. Uh, thank you for having me here today. Um, we're going to go through a quick um, presentation and hopefully also my demo. Uh, as it, of course, as we get the course, hopefully all will go well. Um, so, I just want to cover a bit about what we've been doing over the past uh, two years at Sabres. Uh, what insights we can share from our work on um, our data, what's already working, and the state preview of what's uh, coming um, as well. All right, Adina, I don't want to interrupt, but there's a little bit yeah. of an echo from our near audio. I don't know uh, if there's something. So, one second, let me just get it checked out. Because I don't want to... Is that any better? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, sorry. All right, so um, so we all understand and believe why linked data and why we want to use linked data, whether we want better discoverability, um, to have the options and opportunities of collaborative cataloging and global interoperability, allowing to share different entities um, and different languages over an expanded um, ecosystem and not only in our library silos. Um, and we strongly believe in bringing all of this into Ex Libris' products, whether Alma or Primo, and we've been working together with our community um, in order to make, make this happen. And we can't do this without the community. And I think this is a very important element as part of the LD4 uh, conference to understand that uh, you have an impact and it's important for you to share and, and work together uh, with the vendors because this way we can understand what needs to be developed, what the priorities are, because it's a whole new world and a lot of uh, elements that need to be uh, incorporated. So. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our linked data focus group. Uh, we've been working together for nearly two years already, uh, working on implementing bib frame and linked data features into Alma and Primo. Um, the work has been intense, a lot of nitty gritty details, a lot of um, understanding workflows, and it's been uh, very interesting. I learned a lot uh, from the community and I'm happy to uh, welcome uh, new members that have joined us already, uh, whether it's Yale University, or um, the national, um, sorry, um, um, sorry, I had a blackout there. Um, the National Library of Medicine, um, and we are also welcome to, welcoming uh, new members. If anyone is interested in joining, um, please reach out. I'm happy to have new members join us. Um, so what we've been working on um, is trying to understand how we take these big pillars um, and elements of linked data and how we actually incorporate them into our systems. Um, and what we understand is that there's the need to sort of split up the uh, stages of work that needs to be done. One is the first phase of supporting core functionalities. We need the bib frame records or linked data formats to work side by side with existing formats and have the same elements because uh, a patron wants to loan uh, a record, um, a title, it doesn't matter if it's a mark or a bib frame record and they need to have on both functional in the same function and has to work for both formats, working part of a hybrid environment, having both mark and bib frame side by side um, is part of this challenge. Um, after that, we have enhancing existing capabilities because thanks to linked data and the use of URIs, we have the options to create, uh, take an existing functionality and make it better. Um, and then of course we have the next phase of new linked data features and functionalities and capabilities that we get from uh, moving into um, a linked data environment. So we've been working on all these different um, elements in different stages. And um, as a first goal that we've uh, taken was to sort of define an end-to-end -end workflow, have the ability to catalog records in Synopia, send them into Alma, and view them also in Primo. So being to have this core functionality, having the options to create new linked data records um, and having them uh, function inside Alma and in Primo, same way as all others, has been uh, what we've been testing mainly over the past year and a half uh, with our focus group. Uh, and I'm happy to say it's up and running. Uh, we have uh, two customers already in production working with BibFrame uh, while cataloging Synopia, and we are uh, expecting more to come in the next coming year. Um, in addition to just having this workflow, I can uh, just give a brief overview 
of what support we already have for BibFrame existing within Alma. Uh, so we are, Alma is an open platform. We have APIs uh, for BibFrame work and instance that you can integrate, whether through Synopia. Uh, if anyone is interested, all you have to do is open up uh, an issue for the Synopia on their GitHub, and they will uh, help and you provide your API keys, and they can uh, create the integration for you. Um, we also have the options for BibFrame records are discoverable through our SRU for those who are using alternative discovery uh, systems. And you can view the BibFrame records both as Mark or as BibFrame. Um, the records are searchable. We can view them from any of our standard indexes and also search based on URIs or part of URIs. Um, we also have our, our person entities, which we will uh, talk about further and show as part of our live demo. Um, and we have our resource management uh, workflows. Uh, BibFrame and Mark work the same. So we can add to collections, we can add them to sets, uh, to portfolios. We can add a ho holdings and items within Alma's data model to a BibFrame record as side by side with the Mark record. And the BibFrame records can be published both as Mark, both as BibFrame into external systems as well. Um, fulfillment and acquisition work the same um, as a Mark record and it's all functioning. And uh, we also have uh, in Primo, the records are discoverable. And we've added two new functionalities um, for Ferber and deduping, uh, which we will demo. Uh, we'll demo the Ferber uh, keys that we've added, uh, basically allowing us to match and cluster records also uh, based on URIs. Um, in addition, uh, we all uh, also have the need for instances and works to be supported in analytics. So the instance has been merged into existing um, analytics tables, uh, same as any other bib record, and we've added support for work as well. Um, so all of these functionalities uh, have been tested uh, by our focus group members um, and have uh, and they're working and we're continuing to work together and uh, enhance existing functionalities and adding more. I want to share a bit of the insights um, that I've collected from a uh, meeting with the focus group and this, this daily testing that we've been doing. Um, there was a lot of learning of BibFrame. I think this was a first phase of taking BibFrame, learning how to use the templates in Synopia, understanding how to work in catalog with an RDF-based uh, ontology, uh, which is flexible, which is an advantage, I think, in this case. Uh, it's still shifting and changing a bit. There are the new version that just came out uh, about a month ago also has uh, some significant changes in it. Um, but I think oh, it's over time, uh, the ontology will be stabilizing, which will allow um, better learning um, of the BibFrame ontology. Um, and I think the real advantage to BibFrame is that it modernizes the library metadata management. It allows connections and um, simplifies processes and separates different levels that were sort of combined together um, within Mark. And it allows um, for non cataloger because I'm not a cataloger in my background, uh, I've been able to understand a lot more about how um, ontologies and metadata work with BibFrame. Um, I wanna say in addition, a big part of working with BibFrame or working um, in Synopia is to learn how to use or be part of the linked data ecosystem. Um, it's a complex process. Um, there's a lot of work, a lot of collaboration, um, which is important. And I believe I strongly believe in this collaboration uh, because it's the only way to bring um, bring linked data forward and push it uh, into the front of libraries. Um, there's a strong requirement for stability um, within integrations. If I'm using an API service, I need to know that it, know that it's durable and sustainable and won't change because I want to create something that can last uh, for the long term. So I have to be able to create this ecosystem um, at well, the community uh, with Huxlibris as part of it has to have open communications, back, uh, backwards compatibility, and the need to share changes that happen within each system in order to create this full um, uh, stable ecosystem. Um, and another um, insight I think that was very important, we've had a lot of discussions on what type of collections to catalog and where to start testing BibFrame. And I think it's gonna be a while till um, providers um, start providing, um, vendors start providing uh, BibFrame records or linked data records uh, that will be able to be, that will be available in our community zone. Um, and therefore, I think the natural um, way to go is to focus on manual cataloging, which would naturally lead to um, special collections and arts and rare materials, because there's an advantage to, first of all, learning on something local um, and cataloging it and learning how to use um, 
Midframe and Sinopia, you, uh, working with a special collection. And also this provides an opportunity. It's as a significant opportunity to allow, to expose uh, special collections and rare materials that each institution has and making it into a linked data uh, record and having it exposed and having it linked to Wikidata allows this information to be exposed, to be uh, enhanced and available online as well. Um, and I really believe that BibFrame provides the framework to support copy specific information as well. Um, we are working on uh, analyzing the support for uh, BibFrame item uh, and seeing what needs to be added to Alma's uh, data model for item level as well, as we see that this is a key element that is needs to be added as well. All right, so... Um, I'm going to start, move over to the live demo. Um, I'm going to show you a bit of functionalities that already exist um, in Alma. And I will be happy to show you. I'll give you a sneak preview of also of some uh, work, um, new developments that will be available next year. So we'll start with our all titles. Um, as you can see, um, the all titles is already, I'm already presenting it in our new UI, which is going live in November. Uh, you'll be able to opt in. Um, just showing you here the search, um, we have here a new record format that allows us to view both Mark and BibFrame in the same environment. In this case, if I want to view just the BibFrame records, I can uh, filter them out, um, filter out the Mark records, and I can view my uh, BibFrame records. So here we can see we have a BibFrame in instance, uh, for those who are not familiar. Northern Lights and the Golden Compass are one in the same. Um, these are two books or two editions of the same title. Both of them are the first book of his Dark Materials. One was published in uh, London and one was published in New York. And when it was published in New York, the name was changed to Golden Compass. Um, you can view here, this is the left side where you can see um, the high level detail information. And on the right side, we can view um, the full details of the record. We can view the full record itself. We have special linked data sections, one for contributors and one for subjects. Uh, where we can view uh, the linked authority file. In this case, even if it's a BibFrame record, we can view the MARC authority file, um, as this is what is currently available in uh, the community zone. And we also have uh, this lovely new feature of our person entities, where we can view um, an info card giving us brief information about, uh, about the contributor. Or if we choose to, we can also view the full contributor page, which will provide us with um, additional details whether from Wikidata, Wikipedia, or from our local catalog. Um, so this is uh, the new alt titles. There are additional sections here and functionalities which have, are relevant for both, for all metadata formats, and I won't go into them now. Um, but I do want to show uh, what I talked about before in the new Ferber keys. So um, Ferber is the clustering that you can do within Primo, allowing um, to match between different titles and create a cluster and allow the user to view one version, view it all under the same title on the same search result. Because if someone's looking to borrow this book, they don't care if it's named, uh, if the title is Northern Lights or the title is Golden Compass, because it, essentially it's the same book in the same language. Um, so we've added, I'm just going to show you briefly, I know this is, might get a little techy, but I just want to show uh, for those who are familiar with our configurations, you have in the discovery, we have um, a dedupe and Ferber combination where you can define the different keys by which uh, your clusters in Primer will be, uh, uh, will be displayed. And we've added two new keys, one being uh, an expression of URI, so it's the hubs URI, or we have the work URI. So basically, if we have titles that are linked by the same work or by the same uh, hub, they can still be clustered together uh, within uh, Primo. So um, for example, so in the case of, um, of the example I've given here, we can see here we have the Northern Lights, where I can see here two versions that are found. And I can view that when I open up the versions, I can see that one is Northern Lights and one is Golden Compass. Now. Um, if you want, I can show you there's a test utility, but I don't want to get all technical, but you can see that the match is based only on the URI because the title isn't the same um, and the contributor isn't the same. So it, this is a new ability of taking the, um, the large scale vision of better discoverability and bringing it down to us, um, a practical daily um, use case where we can already enhance existing functionalities, as I mentioned before. Um, 
So this is one uh, element I wanted to show. Um, we also saw beforehand, um, we saw the contributor pages, which is a new linked data functionality that works for Mark and for BibFrame. Um, and I wanted to share with you um, a new feature. Now this is still in development, uh, but there's already quite a bit uh, to view and I'm happy to give a quick uh, preview of our work search. Um, we understood based on the focus group uh, feedback, that there is also a need to take advantage of the work and be able to view the work within Alma and not only um, have the instance in parallel to the bib records. So we've added a new search, which will be a work search. Um, just a quick example. So for example, here I have um, various different titles or works that I've added into um, into Alma. Some of them are examples that were cataloged by focus group members. Um, and we can see that they have additional records. So for example, um, this is one of the records that were cataloged uh, in Synopia. I can view here, uh, similar to the all titles, I have the additional information. I can view the contributor page, the info card and contributor page, and view all the information that is available. And I can navigate to additional uh, pages or titles as needed. Um, and I have here two new sections uh, beyond the sections that I showed before. Um, in this example, we can see one of the instances where I can see, uh, here, I'll make this a little bigger. I can see the different sections, meaning uh, different instances all grouped together under the same work. So if I, and I can see the key information and elements that are different between uh, instances, whether it's a publication day information, identifiers or the edition statement, and whether it's physical or electronic, um, and this way I can view all the records themselves. I can view a full list in a sliding panel if I want to keep uh, my navigation point in the work search, which opens in a sliding panel in all titles results. So I can see um, all, the different, um, all the different titles spread out. I can, uh, I can also generate a new search, which will navigate back to um, the all titles search. Um, and I can create actions on any uh, record as I choose to. So for example, Go back to our example here. I have a quick link that will also bring me fast back to where I was. Um, I can also choose if I want to view the linked data of a specific resource. I can view the list of um, the list of URIs and labels that are linked with that uh, specific record. Um, I also have the option to add all the instances that are connected to one work to a specific collection. Opens in a sliding panel um, and allows me to add it to any. Um, any collection I choose, okay? Um, another option that I have here, I'm um, sorry. Just wanted to now push this a little bit back. Um, that was one uh, new section. So we have the instance section. We also have um, a new section um, for relations as part of the key elements of linked data is the ability to display and create relations between different entities and different records. We have an additional section allowing us to view in addition to the contributors and subjects, which I can view here is more extensive. I can still see all the different pages, all the different information about the different uh, contributors to this title, um, Lord of the Rings. Um, we also have a related work section, which will basically list all um, relations that were cataloged within the work, um, whether it's preceding or receding or any other uh, succeeding, sorry, any other of the relations that are option, uh, that are available within, um, within BibFrame. So just for another example, um, if I'm already showing this example of Lord of the Rings and I'm looking through and I see oh, I have 29 contributors, I want to search for one specific one. Um, I can, sorry. OK, so I can view the different uh, uh, contributors and search through them. I can view the full page of um, I can view the full contributor page, seeing the different titles. I can see, oh, well, he's also an actor. Ian McKellen is an actor as well in X-Men. I'm curious to see what uh, other actors we have uh, that are linked. Um, and I can view, move on to uh, X-Men. This brings me to the all titles that we saw before. I can navigate to the different contributors. I can see um, that also I want to navigate and see where Hugh Jackman, uh, for example, uh, was... Um, 
as an actor and what movies in my catalog that I have that he's related to. And for example, here I can see that I've already reached a point where I have Mark and Bibframe working side by side. I can see the same title. I have an, a view of both titles. So if um, both formats in the same section. So for example, I've also been able to navigate and reach a mark record. So we have really a hybrid environment here that allows us to work side by side um, and navigate and have this ability to connect different titles with contributors. Um, and all of this and more is gonna be coming. Um, the work search uh, is planned to be available for early access uh, next year, in the beginning of next year, um, with a general availability for anyone who is cataloging in bid frame um, throughout the uh, second half of 2025. Um, sorry, I'm going to go back to my slides. Um, so we talked about the work search, which is coming, and that's not the only thing that we're working on. Um, as part of our work with the focus group, we realized that in addition to our integration with uh, Synopia and supporting uh, um, ingest of bit frame records through API, there is also a need for an internal uh, editor within Alma. So um, we have a goal to create a linked data form editor. Now, the reason why I'm saying it's a form editor, the idea is to create a unified interface uh, with research that will be integrated with uh, resource management workflows, allowing users to have the seamless work of not having to go between screens and systems, um, having a flexible and uh, user-friendly interface while still being based on external ontologies. So we'll still be able to create a structure that will support bib frame as first phase, second phase, excuse me, RDA, RDF, and additional metadata formats as needed. Um, the focus will be, uh, the display will focus on labels, meaning we have the ontology, but it's another click away. Um, so that for the, uh, um, any user that is not um, tech savvy or very much in the details of of metadata formats, they understand that they need to catalog the title, um, whether it's a 245 or a BF title um, is irrelevant for most. Um, so the idea is to have the options for those who want to view additional metadata with another click, but also have a, more, a cleaner interface. Um, I think the, the, our approach to this is to create this unified form interface that will be affected by the different metadata formats, but it's creating a different layer, meaning we have the metadata format in the back end, and the front is the front end is a form interface that will um, have optimal workflows best suited for catalogers, um, and having the ontology assist in creating these structures um, and validating the forms that can be created. Um, we are in, currently in design phase um, for this editor uh, with starting development by the end of 2024. I just want to finish with um, a few thoughts on how linked data, I mean, I don't come from a library background, I come from a data background, um, and I joined Ex Libris uh, a bit over a year and a half ago, and I think one of the challenges have been is trying to really create the shift between innovators to early adopters and then from there to mass adoption because linked data is can be very technical. It can be a bit more um, scary for those who are not familiar with it. Um, and I think one of the key elements in order to create this shift is to show the benefit, uh, why linked data, where is it advantage? Um, I think we, we've seen that within our demo. We have the ability to link external information. We have the ability to cluster our uh, results in a better way. Um, and we can improve workflows, all right? So if we're uh, working on our uh, linked data editor as improving our workflows within Alma and also simplifying functionalities, allowing users that want to see the more uh, details and the more uh, technical side of things, they can see it. But for those who are um, more interested in just the workflows, they can have a simplified workflow and knowing that it is supported by linked data in the background. Um, I think this is the main challenge of the next com uh, few coming years. Next couple of years, um, as this will allow us to expand the linked data community and the use of linked data within Alma and Primo. Um, so feel free uh, to join at your own pace. Uh, we're supporting Mark, we're supporting Bibframe, we're supporting both, uh, allowing you to choose your own pace, whether it's picking a specific collection, whether it's working it with it in your uh, sandbox environment or in production, you get to just um, select your own pace. So thank you. Um, if anyone is interested in reaching out to me privately, that's my email, feel free. 
uh, to reach out. Um, I'm happy to chat about anything that has to do with linked data. Wonderful, thank you so much, Adina. So we have uh, time now um, for any questions. If there are any, please speak up or put them in the chat or put them on Slack. Um, we have some already in Slack. Do you want me to um, read them out? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, that's fine. So um, we have um, a question um, saying probably um, because of ignorance, but um, the understanding was that there isn't a um, bib frame record, at least not uh, the same way we have a Mac record for a resource. And um, they said uh, when you were showing the bib frame record for uh, the golden compass, how can we see which metadata elements are attached to the work? and which metadata elements are attached to the instance. And uh, for example, how can we see if a contributor is related to the work, e.g. author or instance, e.g. an illustrator? Um, so uh, just, I think this is a question of understanding what information is part of a work and what um, metadata elements are part of the instance. Um, the work itself encompasses uh, subjects contributors and any element uh, language um, and, the, and the format, as opposed to uh, the instance being uh, a bit more parallel to the bib, uh, to a bib record where you have the publication information um, um, and uh, editions, et cetera. So what we do in Alma is you can search for an instance also by work elements. So it's sort of like flattened into it, but we also have the ability to view just the work. Um, and one of the elements we're working on is really creating this uh, a condensed view that will allow users to see the metadata itself and understand what elements are part of the instance and what elements are part of the work. Okay, great. Um, we also have another um, are the info cards taken away from Wikipedia, Wikipedia or Wikidata, or do they use the Library of Congress Authority data? If they use both, do they preferentially use one or the other? Uh, E.g., if both Wikidata and the Library of Congress name authority have a birth date listed? All right. Um, so the answer is uh, yes, both, everything. Um, the contributor pages we've uh, released, they've already been released in Primo and they will be released um, in November and it's part of the new old titles uh, UI. Um, they are based on Library of Congress uh, authority files combined with Wikidata and Wikipedia. Um, the information itself for specific fields like the example uh, provided uh, for the year of birth, date of birth, um, we've created a prioritization, sorry, uh, that will allow uh, Library of Congress information to be displayed if there is a difference. Um, so you won't see both. Uh, you'll get the, a single truth on the endpoint, but we create a sort of emerging between the information and the back end. Okay, that's fine. Um, before I read the next one, um, we have um, Matthew hands raised up. Matthew, do you want to uh, speak now? Sure. I can. Uh, thank you. Um, I had asked that um, that first question about um, the metadata elements pertaining to the work versus the instance. Um, and Adina, thank you for your presentation. And I like. I just wanted to follow up though. When you were showing in Alma that bib frame record, um, how can we like? How can we identify which of those metadata elements? are coming from the work versus coming from the instance, because it seems to me that we're kind of seeing a combined record displayed in Alma, displaying some things that are at the work level, right, like subjects and title and some that are at the instance level, or is an Alma bib frame record um, really an instance record that duplicates subject headings for each instance? and might have different subject headings for each instance? Or um, like, are those subject headings that you're showing when you show one of those the frame records in Alma, are those subject headings actually coming from the work record? Okay, so uh, yeah, um, yes, of course, that does make sense. Um, I will clarify, the, the records themselves are not created in Alma. 
Okay, so the records right now are cached in Alma. They're coming from external sources, whether it's Library of Congress uh, website IDLoc, or coming from Synopia or um, from any other linked data editor um, mm -hmm. that a user can create. Um, we don't change the records. Okay, so the, the information itself is as we receive it. So we have uh, the instance um, as catalog, the work as cataloged. And what we do is for uh, display purposes and index and searching functionalities, we extract information from the work into our internal uh, data model to uh, help assist uh, disco uh, discoverable discoverability for the instance as well. Um, because it's a hybrid environment and we want uh, the bib frame records to be discoverable uh, on the same level as the mark records. So if on a mark record, I can search by subject, I wanna be able to search the, the bib frame instance also by the subject, even if it's available in the work. So we sort of cache it um, and extract the information into our internal data model for uh, search and display uh, reasons. Does that answer your question? I think so. So does that mean that the, the bib frame record you're showing isn't truly a bib frame record, but it's the internal Alma data model record that is pulling information from bib frame work and bib frame instance records? Okay, so you know, let me sh I just want to I want to show that again. So just a minute. Um, sure, thanks. Um, I think that will clarify it. We have the record. The record itself is as sent to Alma. We don't change the record. We're still storing it, and you can still publish it to external systems as well. So the, mm -hmm. the records themselves are um, as received. The only thing we add is we add an, uh, an Alma URI and local identifier of an MMS ID. Um, but besides that, the record itself is cached. Um, so let me just share my screen again. Um, so you can see this is a mark record, right? This one is a mark record. I can view the mark. Um, I have the same sections um, as I'm not shown seeing before. Your screen, sorry. Not, oh, sorry. Ah, sorry. Okay, there we go. Okay, sorry. Okay. All right. So um, if we're looking at, at the search result from before, we have here mark records and bib frame records. Okay, so we can view the mark. I have here the mark record, and I have all the same functionalities as existing within. Um, uh, which already exists for Mark. And if I'm viewing the bib frame record, okay, so the information extracted here is extracted from the work essentially for the, for the bib frame instance, right? Um, but the record itself, if we're gonna go to view record, you can see the record itself is a bib frame instance, all right? The instance is here, we haven't changed it. So the record itself as a document is still an instance. We're just extrapolating the information from the work and the instance into Alma's data model for functionality reasons. Okay. Well, um, in viewing this BF instance here, if you scroll mm -hmm. down, so there are no subject headings here? Exactly. There are no subject headings okay. in this instance. If I want to view the work, I can view it also from all titles. So example, if I'm going to click here on view work, here I'll see the subject headings, all right? So it's kept in the separate layers. We're keeping the okay, information great. as receiving it. Um, and also you have the option, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to close that. Um, and you also have the option to view the conversion to mark, uh, which was one of, uh, um, one of the workflows that we worked a lot on uh, with the focus group to see how we can create this conversion properly. Now, even if I'm looking at the conversion of the instance, you'll see that it also converts the subject headings because it takes the information from the work and the instance in order to recreate the mark record. Um, this is only on the fly. We're not saving or storing the mark record, same way as I don't store the bib frame record for the mark records. We only have it's an on the fly conversion that's available within Alma. Thank you. This is so helpful to me. Sorry for taking up so much time. Oh, um, that's great. Feel free to reach out if you want to talk more. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, we have another question that is um, having a bit more votes. Um, I think. Um, participants are interested in hearing your answer to the question. And um, it goes to us, what does the ex libris bib frame catalog look like from the patron's point of view? That's the primal view. And how will the APIs work with the ED high for acquisitions to other items using bib frame data? Okay, so um, if I, I can show again, um, sorry, I'll share my screen one more time. This time I'll do it hopefully smooth, more smoothly. Um, so if I'm looking uh, in discovery um, as how the patron sees the information, they see it the same, okay? For the, from the end point, as, sorry, as I mentioned before, we're working on different levels. The first uh, level um, is having the bib frame and the mark work side by side, same functionalities. In parallel, we have the new uh, discovery experience uh, coming out next year with a lot of changes that are going to be in the UI. Sorry. And this- 
Yeah, we're not seeing your screen, the right screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, it can be a little. I keep, I keep on doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get it eventually. Okay, sorry. Okay, um, so yeah, now you can see the right screen. Okay, so the information here you can see it's shown the same way for uh, a bid frame record. Now the only way I can tell that this is a bid frame record is if I go to see the source, I will see that it's a bid frame instance. Um, so within Primo um, right now, the first phase is having the mark and bid frame look the same. Okay, so if I go back to my result list here, I'll see that I have additional records um, that came up with the search result, even if they're mark. Um, so I have it here, I have, and it'll, it will look the same. Um, and the only way that I can know that it's a mark record is if I open up the source. Um, so this is the first phase um, of supporting BibFrame in discovery. The second phase is we have our next discovery experience that's coming out, which will enhance link data capabilities, give a link data experience for both mark and BibFrame records. Okay, I think we have one more question in the Zoom chat. The chat. And um, it's will the coming from editor um replacing up here so we can catalog in bib frame within Halma. So we're not replacing Synopia, it's a parallel track. We understand that there are those who will be interested in to continue working in Synopia, be part of a collaborative catalog um, in open source. Um, so that integration is still standing and will continue to stand. At the same time, we're also working on developing an, an Alma uh, form editor that will support uh, link data formats. So it's uh, two different tracks that we're working at the same time. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Kelly, over to you. I think we still have a few minutes if there's any other questions, anyone? Yeah. Um, I think there was a question from before that I didn't answer about uh, item level information with BibFrame. <coughs> um, so the item data model holdings and items um, work the same for Mark and BibFrame currently. Right now we support the BibFrame work in instance. So the, the data model for items is the same. Um, so anything that's on item level will work whether for Mark or BibFrame. Um, where needed, we convert uh, on the fly the BibFrame to Mark if needed um, for publishing purposes or for discovery uh, and SRU uh, in our, uh, for external systems. But um, the data model itself is the same. I think we have one more question coming in the chat. EDIs and also integrations with ILL systems, will they be able to use BibFrame data? Yeah, yeah, the, it's, it's available through our SRU, yes. Great, okay, if we don't have any more questions coming in, I think we can wrap up and have a little mini bio break before the 945 session. Thank you so much, Adina. Thank you. Uh, sorry, please. Can you share your um, email again if um, anybody wants to um, reach out to you or continue the conversation on Slack? So yeah, sure. Uh, sure, I'll put it on the chat. Yeah, thank you very much. And you can also drop that on the um, Slack um, channel. So that's, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Welcome. thank you very much. Thank you.